Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center, home of the Tina Turner Museum. And welcome, everybody, to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where every week we explore the history, the incredible people, and the fascinating culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Emily, before I introduce today's guest, what is something you have discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? We have a collection of NASA mission patches on display with one patch for every manned space mission, and it is one of the very few complete sets of NASA patches that exists. And it is a fascinating exhibit to get to check out to see all those patches. They look like uh, little pieces of artwork, each and every one, a lot like bow ties, which leads me into today's very special guest, Terrence Martin of Impeccable Not Bow Tie Company. I am a huge fan of bow ties, and Keith Carver tells me that I should be a big fan of Terrence Martin as well. So, welcome, Terrence. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. So tell me a little bit about um, where you came from, how you grew up, where you grew up, things like that. Yes, absolutely. I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, that's where I uh, got my, my formal education. Um, then went to uh, UT Martin, University of Tennessee at Martin, in Martin, Tennessee, for my undergraduate work um, in business education. Um, then got my first teaching job uh, in the Chicagoland area. So I went from UT Martin to Chicago, Illinois, uh, pretty much within a week or two and um, taught school up there, went back and got my master's degree, uh, got into administration. So I've been a principal of a high school, middle school, sister superintendent of a school district in Des Moines and here in Georgia, where I am now in Atlanta, um, and just enjoying life, man. So uh, that's just a little bit about about me and, you know, you know, just the the average kid that that uh, that made some good good decisions along the way and took advantage of every opportunity that that came my way that uh, that was able to push me in the right direction. And so, did you grow up in Nashville proper or in the suburbs, the outskirts, uh, or East Nashville, East Nashville proper? So yes, right there in the city, in the city. So um, you know, actually, I mean, when I I can go on top of the hill where my where I grew up at and see the Titan Stadium um, from my from my top of my driveway where my where my parents live. So yeah, I would say Nashville proper in the city of Nashville is where I grew up. Oh, that's incredible. Um, and so when you're when you're a young man in Nashville and you're picking colleges, um, was was uh, UT Martin at the top of the list or was it a was it a dark horse? How how'd that go? <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I really wanted to get away from home, man. Everybody was going to Tennessee State, uh, which is a local uh, HBCU. Uh, a lot of a lot of students that graduated with us uh, went to uh, 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 either Tennessee State or Trevecca uh, there in the city. Uh, but I wanted to get away from home. And so my English teacher, uh, my senior English teacher, uh, invited me to go check out, do a college tour at UT Martin because she had, that's where she had got her, de her degree in education from. And so uh, I took the day off of school. Um, Mom uh, took the, and I went to uh, visit the campus. And uh, once I hit the campus and took a tour and, and was re well received, I knew that's where I wanted to uh, spend the, the next four years of my life uh, getting that, that bachelor's degree. In high school, you know, we are going to talk about bow ties in a minute, but now in high school, uh, were you having any interest in fashion or uh, did you did you uh, dabble in the art department or were you all English? What what kind of student were you? Man, I was, you know what? I was the average kid. I played basketball. Uh, I was on the basketball team. Um, I was also uh, uh, part of the baseball program there at the high school. So I, I would consider myself somewhat of an, of an athlete. Uh, but uh, as far as fashion is concerned, I always uh, 
wanted to present myself in a in a very uh, decent and mannerable way. That's just the way I was raised by my parents. So um, that was always presentation was always important to me um, because uh, the fact that uh, that was one of the things that my parents really, really instilled in um, both myself and along with my sister, that when you leave the house, make sure that you are uh, appropriate, decent and in order. So <clears throat> this idea of being very neat, and um, and pristine. Uh, that's something that's been with me for quite some time now. And do you remember when you wore your first bow tie? Man, absolutely. I was actually a high school student, um, and um, just hanging out with some older guys that uh, uh, kind of showed me the ropes, got me into uh, uh, introduced me to wearing bow ties. Uh, and so, actually, a, a guy that I uh, play basketball with in the, in the neighborhood, uh, gave me my bow tie, showed me how to tie it. And I would say that from that point, I just had a, a fond of wearing, of wearing bow ties. It just gives you a different, uh, look. It's a, a more polished, distinguished look and everybody can't wear bow ties. I tell people that all the time, <laughs> bow ties, self bow ties are not for everybody. Right. You have to have uh, you have to have a certain aura about yourself to have uh, to be able to pull off the, the bow tie look. And so so you had somebody show you how to tie it the first time. That's probably the most intimidating part is people don't know. Um, they see the shape of a bow tie and it's hard to imagine that that's going to go around your neck and go from that to what I see you wearing today, which is a fantastic looking bow tie, by the way. Thank you, uh, sir. But so, so your friend showed you, showed you exactly how to tie it. And then, I mean, when I tied my first bow tie, I have a friend named Joey Solopec, who's a meteorologist in Memphis, who, who was big on bow ties. And he loaned me my first bow tie, showed me how to tie it, but I couldn't, it couldn't stick in my brain. I'd have to get YouTube videos anytime I wanted to wear a tie and watch YouTube, learn how to tie it. Yeah, I think we all go through the same challenge when we we're initially introduced to doing it. So right now, I you know, I do I put out some videos on how to tie a bow tie. And, I, and in that video, I always speak to you got to practice when you're doing something for the first time. Um, you have to expect that you may have to come back to it over and over again. And to your point, um, watching additional videos, YouTube videos, you know, everybody have their own spin and their, their own uh, approach to actually tying a bow tie, but it all really comes to, down to some, some basic fundamental things that you have to do, just like you're tying your shoes or just like you're tying a necktie. Once you learn how to do it and you do it over and over again, you really good, you really get good at it. Right. So uh I think for me, I mean I'm I'm we've been I've been doing it for a long time and I can probably do it without even looking at a mirror just by by the touch and the feel of it uh because I've done it so much. And bow ties are supposed to not be perfect. They're supposed to have no. their own little personality. That's every right. tie That's right. on every different person has a different personality. So uh, it Absolutely. doesn't have to be perfect. So you wore bow ties through the years. Did you continue to, or did you get known as the bow tie guy? You know what? I, I, didn't, I didn't get that kind of recognition until I start working. You know, I wore, I wore bow ties when I was in undergrad at UT Martin um, around the campus, you know, um, just to give me a, a different look. Now, did you know um, Keith Carver? I didn't know Keith, Dr. Carver, at the time. Um, and I'm surprised I didn't because I was very involved at UT Martin. I was an ambassador, a pep leader. I was an RA. I was in Congress. So I probably knew him but didn't know him, you know? Yeah, well, you know, he's a big bow tie wearer. So, yes. um, yeah, I, I, every time I see him, he's got a bow tie on. Absolutely. Hey, Keith, man, he's, uh, you know, he's a super guy, man. He's all over the campus. He's all over the state of Tennessee really pushing UT Martin and getting students to attend school there. So uh, when I first saw, saw him on social media, I, again, like you, I saw he was, he was wearing the bow tie. And every time I seen different pictures, he was wearing a different bow tie. So I, I, I just, uh, I knew that he was that guy that really would appreciate wearing a custom quality bow tie uh, that we, uh, that we market and, and sell with impeccable knots. So, um, at some point, as you alluded to, we're going to talk about your company, Impeccable Knots. But I'm curious, at what point did you start to have the very first glimmer of the idea that you should start your own bow tie company? Great, great. Man, I, I, like I, I shared, uh, I've been in education since uh, 94, 1994. 
And um, I was wearing bow ties as a classroom teacher when I was in, in, got into administration. I was still wearing bow ties. And I think you kind of alluded to this. You know, they uh, my students were calling me Mr. Bowtie. They was if I didn't wear a bow tie, they was wondering, OK, what's going on with Mr. Martin today? You know, so they was my students actually expected me to wear bow ties um, every single day to the point where um, and I, I never forget this had about 10 students that wanted to meet with me. I was a high school principal in Illinois and they wanted to meet with me um, after school. And so when I talked to them, they said that they wanted to learn how to tie bow ties. And I was very intrigued by that because these were some super duper kids. These were Ivy League bound kids that wanted to learn how to tie a bow tie. So we started a bow tie club at, at, uh, at Rock Island High School. And I had probably about 20 young young men wearing bow ties on Thursdays, man. And it just it just it kind of changed the culture of the school. Right. And so people would visit and be like, Terrence, when I see you, I see you're all over this school because I see now I've got you got kids wearing bow ties. So that was uh, for me, that was uh, that was recognition enough. It was an epiphany to say that people do pay attention and kids are attracted to wearing bow ties. So at that point, um, I decided that I wanted to want to continue to wear the bow ties. And I also will say that every time I wore bow tie and I was out going to conferences, I was speaking all over the place on, on, on education related topics. People were asking me about where I got my bow ties. So when those questions start coming, Hey, Terrence, Mr. Martin, where you get your bow ties, man? I, I, I wear them or I want to get into wearing them, but I don't know where to buy them from. And so if that just it just kept happening and I just decided, you know what, let me take a pause for a second and get a design, do some design and start uh, uh, rolling out my own my own bow tie collection. And thus is is, is how and why uh, Impeccable Knots was birthed. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to dive into more. I want to I want to learn all about um, how you go from an idea to an actual product in the store. So we'll be right yes. back with more bow ties from Terrence Martin. The West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center in Brownsville, Tennessee, at exit 56 off I-40, offers an authentic Southern experience showcasing the history and culture of rural West Tennessee. Inside, visitors can learn about the history of cotton, explore the scenic and wild Hatchie River, and get to know the legendary musicians who call West Tennessee home. Also located on the grounds is Flag Grove School, the childhood school of Tina Turner, and the last home of blues pioneers Sleepy John Estes. To learn more about the center, visit westtnheritage.com. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And I hope while you're listening, you might be wearing a bow tie, because this is your host, Scott Williams, and our guest today is Terrence Martin, and we're talking all about bow ties and how he went from uh, knowing that his bow tie was making a powerful fashion statement to becoming a bow tie entrepreneur all on his own. So uh, when we left off, Terrence, you were telling us about um, how you decided you might start making your own bow ties. So what was the uh, what was the first steps? I can barely tie a button. I mean, sew a button. See, I don't even know what you do. I can barely sew a button onto my shirt. So how did you figure out uh, how you wanted to have your bow ties made? Yeah, I, I, um, I, I just, for me, um, I always knew I wanted to do it. I just never had the time, you know, uh, working, um, in education as, a as an assistant superintendent principal, um, just the time in which to stop and pause enough to, to venture out and to find someone that can actually, pr uh, produce the type of quality bow tie that I was looking for. And so I say that to say this, I think once, uh, uh, things slowed down as a result of COVID-19. I found myself at the house, man, just with a with just idle, just idle in one place. And so I had time to really sit down and start sketching out some different um, design opportunities. Um, I knew exactly. I kind of pushed out all my bow ties that I had, and I was kind of touching the fabric of what I wanted my particular bow tie. And I think if you know bow tie wears, they have their favorite bow tie. 
And it's pretty much it's either about the color of it or the feel or the, the firmness of it. And so I just knew from that point I was looking for someone that could can make my bow ties based on the color combination and the di- designs that I was looking for, plus the, the quality of the fabric and the inner linings of what goes into the bow tie was extremely important. So as as at that point, I just start putting some fillers out there, trying to figure out who would be the best person that could would be willing to to work with me and, and making sure that uh, I get exactly uh, what I needed uh, to represent my my company. And so did that's you take, how it all. Did you, take, did you take bow ties apart? Yes. Uh, to be yes. able to see what they I, actually look like? I took a few of them apart. I, I sent samples to a couple of uh, manufacturers, uh, uh, design companies, uh, manufacturing companies that produce bow ties. I sent actual product to them and uh, and had some conversations with them about what I was looking for and um, and just got fortunately, I was lucky to find somebody that was you know willing to work with me. And because I had a, I mean, my expectations were extremely high. I mean, I this one here is just as a result of me wanting to come up with something in the plaid, the plaid uh, collection with a little pop of color, you know. And so you just got it's important to find somebody that's not going to try to produce what they want, but that are we willing to listen to you, ask the proper questions, so that at the end of the day, um, the finished outcome is exactly what you want. And so that happened for me. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm very fortunate that I have a great relationships. And when you get into entrepreneurship, it's strictly about relationships, man. People, you have to have those relationships where they will burn the midnight oil for you if that's what's required, right? And, and so, you found, a, did you find, a, is it a company or an individual that actually so? I, I, I kind of use a company. That's, it's a small company. Um, it's probably they probably only have about five or six staff members that work in the company that do this type of uh, of work. Um, and so, um, you know, I didn't want to venture out to a big company because you you become a number, right? I wanted somebody who was going to give me some some hands on, be hands on with me, and to allow me to customize exactly what I what I needed. If I say I needed a, a couple of extra centimeters on this side of the bow tie. If I say I wanted my own tagline, my own logo on the inside of my bow ties, uh, you know, if I wanted right now, I'm into extra large bow ties, Scott, because a lot of guys that are that are pretty big in size, just six, five and above with some weight on them, the small bow ties don't look good on them. So I start looking at designing larger, extra large bow ties, right? For my big guys, right, and that has been something that I think is uh, has evolved over time. And I think I would, I, I think that's important. If you're going to get into this business, you can't just start and stay there. You have to constantly be looking for innovation, innovative opportunities, um, and you have to kind of shift and change with the times and make sure that you're meeting the actual needs of those who are your uh, your customers. And so have you got I'm, any uh, professional athlete customers yet with the big with the big uh, I, I haven't I haven't got any I have some college kids out of uh, from the University of Georgia that uh, that buy some of my bow ties but I haven't got broken into the, the NFL as of yet. Man I've I've sent some things to uh, to uh, Charles Barkley. I've tried to get him to rock a bow tie on the on the sports station, right? Uh, so I, when I, when I'm watching television, I'm looking at people that I think might be willing to try it. I also look at people that's already wearing bow ties that's on, that's on television and trying to, um, introduce them to the impeccable knots brand, you know? So that, uh, I love getting into that, man. I, the day that I can watch, uh, ESPN and see athletes and sports announcers wearing my my bro bow ties. I mean, that's the day that I I, I really look forward to. And it, I think it's going to happen. It's about branding. It's about marketing. And I think once people uh, get a feel for what you're offering and they see the quality of it, they I I, I really I'm very confident that they will want to uh, to do business with with us. And so, how did, what what uh, inspired you to move to Georgia? Oh, work, man. Uh, again, I was uh, I was an assistant sup- superintendent in Des Moines Public, and I wanted to get closer to my daughter. My daughter's in Nashville uh, with her mother, and uh, I wanted to be closer to her. And Atlanta was a good landing spot for me. 
instead of being 14 hours away, now I'm only three hours away from Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, and so do you do this, is this your full-time gig now, or do you also have another gig as well? (laughs) No, man, this is, uh, this is not my full-time. I work for the DeKalb County school district, uh, uh, around, uh, school redesign and innovation, looking at schools and way where we are right now and what they may look like 10 or 15 years from now. And, and helping school districts to make that shift. So I'm, I'm doing that kind of work right now in the field of education still. Um, but then I also do the bow tie business on the side. That, those two things are both important and both keep you busy, I know. Yes. Um, so I'm going to ask you some education questions in a minute. But uh, for now, so I'm, I'm curious, you've got this idea, you've got the products you really like. Uh, you don't have a background necessarily in sales. How do you know what to do next? Well, I, I asked a lot of questions. Um, I connect with people that's in the business, um, not, not, not necessarily in the bow tie business, which I do that too, but in sales, right? And I do a lot of reading and research around um, marketing and branding um, uh, and also utilizing social media to get, uh, to get your brand out there. Um, so I'm just doing, uh, it seems like every day, every week, I'm trying to do something um, in addition to what I've been doing, just trying to do something new to, uh, to help market and push the product. You know, um, you know, I, I have a lot of people, know a lot of people that wear bow ties from superintendents to teachers, to principals, to pastors of church, clergy, uh, um, you know, and, and educators throughout the country. So I'm constantly uh, sending them pictures of new product, the new collections that I come out. And that's another thing. I try to push out at least 10 new bow ties every year. I'm working on some designs right now that I think is going to be hot for 22, you know, and that's part and of the research. How many, how many of each design do you typically do? Right now, um, I have uh, a, a few different, I have what's called a combination collection. Combination collection is just that, it's just what that is. You can wear stripes on one side and polka dots on another side, and you can reverse it, right? It's a reversible bow tie. That's pretty much my hottest seller. That's the combination collection. Then we also have a stripe collection. Um, and I have, uh, in the combination connection collection, I have about maybe about seven or eight different bow ties. In the stripe collection, they probably have about six right now, six or seven in the stripe collection. Then we have a Paisley collection. I have about four or five in that collection. Um, and then I have a, uh, we we'll call it patterns. Um, that can be your plaids, that can be your solids and that type of thing. Um, and so I have that, that's probably, uh, I probably have about, maybe about six in that. So I think uh, as a whole, we probably right now have about, 35 different bow ties, 30 to 35 different bow ties in our entire collection. And I do have some new ones coming out. I'm waiting to get them, man. I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, one of those is a black velvet bow tie. Cause I've had some people that say, Terrence, man, I do a lot of stuff during the holidays, man. And, and I, I go to some black tie events and I want to be able to rock a, a velvet, black velvet bow tie. So I got some of those coming and I think that's going to be uh going to be a great seller for us as well. That's nice. I personally also like blue velvet. A blue velvet yes. bow tie yes. would be very mm-hmm. cool. Um, so who actually fulfills your orders? Do you fulfill fill them yourself or do you have a company that does that for no, you? No, I, I do all the uh, order fulfillment myself. Um, and so I try to uh, commit to going to the post office to ship out product at least twice a week. Right. So uh, that's that's, you know, the post office is not too far from my house. So I'm either catching them on the way to work or catching them on the way home or I may catch the post office open on Saturday morning. But I try to commit to getting making sure I get uh, get my uh, fulfill my orders. um, And I do that right here at the house and get them to the post office as soon as possible. And the post office folks say, oh, here comes the bow tie, man. (laughs) Yeah, because my my packaging is the same. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they, my packaging is the same. And so they already because they they when I first started doing it, they started seeing me all so frequently. They was asking me, what is it that's in these little, little pillowcase boxes that you ship out all the time? And uh, I so I share what that what that is. So, yeah, they do all they do say that here comes the bow tie guy again. So, you know, I can have anywhere from two orders to 20 orders all at once. But again, my thing is customer service. Uh, that's one thing we pride ourselves 
I pride myself in is making sure that people get exactly what they ordered in a timely manner. Um, so the mission of Discovery Park is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. So I'm always curious when people who've done uh, something cool like you have and made an actual idea come to life, what your inspiration is, where, where do you, where did you, and where do you find your inspiration uh, to follow through on an idea like this? Well, I think, I think inspiration comes from uh, a couple of different places. One, when people recognize, uh, uh, the, the, the bow ties that you're wearing, I think that's that's a sense of inspiration. When people acknowledge and say, man, I really like that bow tie, that's a sense of uh, inspiration. Um, and, I, and I just think, you know, and just being able to pr- promote impeccable knots and, and, and seeing people that's very happy about what we are delivering by way of the bow ties that they order is also uh, as encouraging as as, as well. So it's a combination of a lot of different things. You know, uh, I, I always remember when I was in Des Moines Publix uh, as an associate suit, I would uh, have to present to the board at least once a month at board meetings. And uh, one of the board members would always uh, say, here come third good Marshall. He would call me <laughs> third good, right? Because of my bow ties, right? So uh, yeah, it's just great. little things like that. And then they love, they, they really, really like the look. It's, it's, it's a very clean, um, uh, academia, it's an academia look that you, that you, that you, that, especially when you wear it the right way with the right suit or sweaters and things like that. Um, it, it really, it really speaks volumes and that, and that's, and I also want to say that people that wear bow ties, I mean, you can wear bow ties with jeans. You don't have to suit it up all the time. You can wear bow ties with jeans and a sweater and, you know, and a, and a shirt and pop the bow tie and keep it moving. So it's a very casual look. But you can also dress it up um, for a more uh, business look. And then, then you can also take extend it to a more formal look as well. It definitely makes a statement. Whenever I wear a bow tie, people always say, hey, I like your bow tie, which is always fun. It's a, yes. definitely a fun way to talk to people and uh, to get to know people. So um, I'm curious with your background in education, um, you obviously we have a lot of school groups here at Discovery Park and, you know, at, we're, we're very much part of the education community. What do you see as the correlation between, um, how students dress and how they leave the house and how well they learn and how way they, how much they get involved in school? Do you see a correlation? I, I do. I think I, I, I do. I really do. I think people, when, when students, uh, feel good about themselves, there's a sense of pride that comes with that. And I'm just kind of reflecting on this bow tie club, man. These kids, I would see these kids all the time as just regular, you know, my students, you know. But when they start wearing bow ties and they start being recognized by teachers and their peers, it it really gave them a sense of empowerment and pride in who they were because of the fact that they were wearing wearing a, a, a bow tie. So I think for me, it that really showed me that it's important to create um, opportunities and environments where kids can, can feel good about themselves. And the idea of wearing a bow tie, it creates that type of spirit in a, in a, in a young student where they can, can, can actually uh, set themselves apart, so to speak, by, by rocking the, the look of a bow, of a bow tie. Uh, and so that, that's, you know, that has, has really been encouraging for me. One of the things that, you know, with this bow tie, they, we started a bow tie club at the high school and uh, they came up with the, the acronym. I didn't come up with it. The kids did bow tie building our way toward intellectual excellence. So that became the brand, right? So when we, when they was meeting and I would come into their meetings and I would ask them pointed questions. When you think about building our way toward intellectual excellence, what does that mean to you? You know, and how does wearing a bow tie fit and 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 align with that with that with that uh, with that theme or that model, right? And so uh, I thought it was very ingenious and creative for them to take the word bow tie and to create a slogan, if you will, that really drove them in the work and what they were able, how they were able to present and get other kids to buy into this idea of intellectual excellence, right? And so those are just, just, just small examples of how, uh, how uh, wearing bow ties 
and creating space for students to feel good about themselves in the schoolhouse and beyond um, by simply wearing a bow tie and how it can impact the life of a, of a student. And, you know, those those young men uh, think about that still every yes. time they put a bow tie on, you know, they think about that. Yes. Um, and have those memories. That's great. That's a great story. That would be a great book. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know you have a lot to do. Ooh. You don't want to have to write a book now, but if you ever do, that would be a good book. So, yeah. so uh, what's the, uh, you've mentioned some new lines of ties you have coming out. What else is uh, in the future uh, for your bow tie business? You know what, man, I, I've been having some people to ask me about matching handkerchiefs. And so oh, that's a great idea. I have that so, problem all the time. For so my, since Christmas, uh, I'm coat. working, I'm actually working with my manufacturer, uh, on some 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 uh, pike and square ideas, man. So I'm excited to be 12 by 12, 100 percent silk material in the in the same color combination as the bow tie. So I think that's that's next level for impeccable knots. You know, we want to offer. I'm not saying that every bow tie we have or have a matching square with it, but we do want to have a, a get into the business of offering um Pike it squares to go along with the, the bow tie so that people that uh, that want to, you know, purchase both the bow tie and the handkerchief, they can do that as well. Yeah, fantastic. Well, um, we've talked a lot about it, but we haven't necessarily told people where they could go uh, to buy their own uh, bow tie. Where where if, if uh, folks listening want to get a bow tie, where do they go? They can go straight to my website. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The website address is www.impeccableknots.com, C-O-M.com, impeccableknots.com. Please visit the site. It's a very user-friendly site. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me or contact me by phone, um, 815-295-295. 2418. That's my cell phone number. You can reach me at any time um, on that line as well. But the website is very uh, uh, inclusive. Um, it will help as you're shopping. You can kind of streamline exactly what you're looking for. You can look at all the bow ties or if you just want to look at the combination co collection, you can do that as well. So uh, again, it's uh, www.impeccableknots.com. And we'll put a link uh, in the show notes. Now, last question. Has Keith Carver gotten you to design some UT Martin line of bow ties yet? You know what? He, it, I think it's coming. I think it's coming, man. He he purchased uh, a few of my bow ties already. He purchased the school colors. He got my um, uh, one that I call the Chancellor. Oh, wait, I, I also name all of my bow ties. But okay, the one that he cool. that he likes is the Chancellor. And I know he likes it because it's it's that orange and that navy blue. Uh, UT Martin School colors. So, I, 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 after he listened to this, he may say, "Hey, Terrence, let's talk about um, doing a custom design for for UT Martin." And I'm open to that as as well. That's what it's all about. That's the unique part about having your own business. You know, you can work with individuals that may have an, a design idea, and that uh, that you can actually uh, get it done. You know, so uh, he may call me. Uh, I hope that he does, but we'll be ready. You know, and that's just it. My 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 tagline. Let me give you my tagline. Yeah. Uh, for impeccable knots, I always tell people uh, it's ready or not. In K N O T, here we come. It's that <laughs> old game that we all played when we were little, right? Mm -hmm. Ready or not, K N O T, here we come. And so I always tell people to get ready. Once you wear an impeccable knot bow tie you definitely will uh will make a lot of uh a lot of noise when you enter the room. So, uh man, I'm just so excited about this opportunity. I'm just uh just uh on on tiptoe anticipation of great things, greater things that's going to happen with the bow tie business. And that's fantastic and you've inspired me. I'm going to get on there and, and buy a bow tie. Um and so maybe I need to ask for some dinosaur bow ties cuz you know we have dinosaur bones here at Discovery <laughs> Park. So I'll uh, I'll check out one and find one for me on there. We also have a uh, space, a lot of us uh, we have transport. We there's probably a lot of bow ties you have that tie into Discovery Park and you know what we need to, we need to sell some of your bow ties here in our okay. gift shop. We okay. got to work that out. Okay, Please. we'll work that out offline. Yes sir. Thanks to you and thanks to all of our listeners who joined uh, Terrence, Emily, and me today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. 